नमस्कार मैं हूँ आशा लता पांडे और मेरा पेपर का विषय है कॉन्फ्लिक्ट एंड कॉन्शियसनेस अवैदिक पर्सपेक्टिव व्हाट इज कॉन्शियसनेस इन सिंपल वर्ड्स कॉन्शियसनेस इज वन अवेयरनेस ऑफ हिमसेल्फ एंड द वर्ल्ड अराउंड हिम एज पर साइकोलॉजी कॉन्शियसनेस इज द सब्सटेंस प्रेजेंट इन ह्यूमन बींग्स बिकॉज ऑफ विच ही एक्सपीरियंसिस ऑल काइंड ऑफ फीलिंग्स seeing hearing comprehending and thinking all are part of consciousness as well as our sorrows and happinesses basically there are four things in consciousness mind intellect conscious and ego consciousness makes us take decisions and do efforts there are three levels of consciousness consciousness subconsciousness and unconsciousness there are three qualities of consciousness knowledge related emotion related and act related the three levels of consciousness uh, in our consciousness makes us think and understand and act thoughts and ego reside here our subconscious has those thoughts which we do not remember immediately and can be remembered later at some time our conscious has things which one has forgotten and cannot remember even after trying but can be remembered by some particular efforts consciousness is mere a mere film between two oceans the subconscious and the superconscious said swami vivekanand as the word means sub is lower conscious and super is higher conscious both these are vast and infinite the portion of which we are aware is only a minute fraction of its totality with yogic practices our conscious awareness expands through both of them our subconscious is filled with the past experience and is also home of our lower instincts super conscious is the realm which soars to endless skies from our super conscious wisdom descends and one is suffused with energy and the source the quantum of awareness of these three vary with people indian philosophers have perceived consciousness as truth ex truth conscious ecstasy which we say sachidanand philosophy perceives consciousness as self lit substance however it is very difficult to define consciousness philosophers scholars and psychologists differ in their opinions about consciousness <coughs> some relate it to the mind some to the heart and some to the nerves it is not an independent substance body and consciousness are interrelated and both affect each other but at the same time sometimes consciousness does not affect the body and sometimes body does not affect consciousness some scholars are of opinion that the body is a mere instrument to be used by the consciousness which is used and also unused sometimes but if the body gets damaged then consciousness cannot function at all in in conflict and in resolving the conflict acts of consciousness are inherent we are conscious of various objects our conflicts our our self other things relationship of self and other thoughts feelings sensations and even consciousness itself to resolve the conflict in consciousness one has to increase one's awareness and correct the surroundings too if the environment is chaotic it affects the consciousness consciousness blossoms when awareness comes and awareness comes through observation when we observe little cheerful things around and wonderful natures regular phenomena all around us our heart is filled with bliss which leads to enlightenment one has to make attempts to settle and calm the consciousness the steps that can be taken to manage our inner conflicts are to identify and acknowledge the conflict to explore the origin of the conflict and to calm one's mind and find a solution 
although it is very difficult, but it can be achieved by practice and concentration, says Sri Krishna in Bhagavad Gita. Abhyasen tu kaunte vairagyen cha grihyate, O son of Kunti, Arjuna. Indeed, the mind is unsteady and very difficult to control, but it is possible to control the mind by practice and detachment. How does one uh, get it? Through yoga. In chapter 6, Dhyan Yoga, chapter 6 of Bhagavad Gita, the Ashtanga Yoga has been given, which is uh, given by uh, in Yoga Sutra by Patanjali. The eight, eight uh, Ashtanga, eight uh, things in Ashtanga Yoga. Yama Niyama, Asana Pranayama, Dhyan Dharana, Pratyahar, Samadhi, and Samadhi. When the mind is restrained and peaceful by the practice of yoga, it becomes detached from material desires. Thus, one can perceive the self and attain happiness. Being situated in this plane of eternal bliss, which is beyond the scope of the mundane senses and obtained through intelligence, one never deviates from reality. Upon gaining this position, one considers that there is nothing superior to his, to this and does not become disturbed even in the midst of greatest calamities. In uh, some Western philosophers, philosophical systems, the mind is conceived of as the self, but this does not hold true in yoga. In yoga, the mind is called the sense within, the sense of the body like sight, sound, touch, smell and taste are engaged with the external objects and the mind acts as the faculty that ultimately makes sense of sensual experiences. The sense within. But in yoga, the self is conceived of as a transcendental substance that exists independent of the mind and body. Therefore, according to the knowledge of yoga, the self survives the death of the body and mind. It is something completely different. There are many external practices within the yoga system as, such as fasting and living in the secluded place that helps to control the mind like vipassana and things like that. Bhakti yoga is uh, another uh, way of controlling the mind. It is recommended to control the mind by mantra and so on. Scientists are also working on the methods of healing through consciousness. Many types of experiments are going on in this field. Artificial intelligence is one of them. It is doubtful if a robot can have consciousness. Do animals have consciousness? All these are debatable questions. Animals and plants as well. All these are different efforts towards the study of consciousness. Many inquisitive minds and scientists are engaged in the experiments towards consciousness. Consciousness connects. And this is collective consciousness. As Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Sarva bhut sthitam yo maam bhajateka tvam asthitah sarvatha vartamano pisa yogi mai vartate. Means that yogi who venerates me, with the knowledge that I am situated in all living beings as the superconscious abides in me in all circumstances. Krishna says that he is in all living beings as the Paramatma and all living beings are in him as his parts and parcels. He is in all things and all things are in him. Uh, one who endeavors to see in this way becomes enlightened. Such a vision is enlightenment. This, uh, uh, we all have experienced such things in our lives. Vedas suggest that the entire universe has been created by our own mind. They say that there is only one mind, the one and only cosmic mind, and that is the mind of each one of us. Each one of us is said to be in possession of a cosmic mind. 
uh, there is only one mind according to Vedanta since there is only one consciousness. This consciousness of each one of us is a reflection of the one and only cosmic consciousness which is the creator, maintainer and the dissolver of everything in the universe. There is a beautiful verse uh, regarding this in the Rig Veda which says two similar birds that are ever associated perch on to the same tree of these one eats the fruits of divergent tastes and the other looks on without eating. Dva suparna sahija sukhaya. Prayer is one of the easier ways to connect to cosmic consciousness. One ought to introspect first and then try connecting with the universe. Practices of yoga, sahaj yoga, pranic healing, meditation are all efforts towards one goal. Many cults have developed in this field like Brahma Kumaris, followers of Maharshi Mahesh Yogi of Transcendental Meditation, followers of Sri Sri Ravi Shankar and so on. Scientists are working on the methods of healing through consciousness, as I said before, and many types of experiments are going on to solve the mystery of consciousness. Pure consciousness is that level of reality which the ancient Vedic science describes as anuramiyan mato mahiyan, that which is smaller than the smallest and bigger than the biggest and is all pervasive. And it is this omnipresent field of cosmic consciousness which connects us all and connects us to the one and only, the omniscient and the omnipresent Satchidananda. Who is Sat? The truth. Who is the Chit? The consciousness and who is also Anand? The ecstasy. There are five primary subject matters explained in Bhagavad Gita, namely Atma, Individual consciousness, prakriti, material nature, karma, action, kal, time, and Ishwar, the supreme controller. The culmination of knowledge is to understand the absolute as the underlying principle of everything. One may know it as consciousness, as any of the deities, as God, or as anything else. But the reality remains one truth, which is the only one spoken about in many ways. Ekam sad vipra vahuda vadanti. It could be consciousness, it could be God, it could be any deities, but it is the uni definitely it is the universal consciousness that connects us all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.